kill deer, foxes, rabbits, hares and mink. Many of the hunts are themselves hunted by their implacable enemies, the saboteurs doing their best to get in the way and spoil it all. Tonight, two reports, one from either side of the fence, from two young men who are in the studio with me. First, Nick the Huntsman. At the end of the winter, we spent a weekend in London and Cambridgeshire with him and the Newmarket Beagles, who are unusually a group of young city people who hunt hares on foot. Nick and his fellow Beaglers speak only for themselves. Here's his story. I'm a political researcher. I'm age 24. So I've always had a great interest in matters affecting the countryside and I've been following hounds of one sort or another for most of my life. Come on here, mercy. Yeah, come on, girl. Come on here. Oh, girl. Yeah, yeah. Marshall, yeah. It does demand a certain amount of dedication to get up on a, a freezing cold morning very early indeed, knowing that afterwards I have to drive into London to work. marvellous day last Saturday. I was very pleased to deal with the turnout, both from mm -hmm. some of the farmers there and locally. We had about 50 people out. It's it was interesting to see there were lots of people that uh, it was their first time out. Yeah. A few people from work came along. Best. So that was quite yeah. good. They, they had a good day. And so very they much stayed out about it afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think it was good news. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought the pub put on a very good tea. That was very, it was oh, good. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They were very enthusiastic about yeah. coming. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, again, very I'm sure we'd be able to go there again. Yeah, I think we get an even bigger number of people then. Mm. Yeah, but it was, a, it, was a, it was a good day sport. It was marvellous. Kind of aura about hunting, which uh, people may not, not think they're particularly welcome. Yes. To, to sort of join into that yeah. kind of more exclusive kind of yes. atmosphere, which sometimes surrounds yes. hunting. Yes. And that, this and is where I think that yeah, beagling helps too, because uh, if if you're talking about foxhounds, it's very easy for people. I know myself. If you're on your feet, looking up at somebody on a horse. Uh, you immediately start to feel that they're adopting a superior attitude. Well, we're all in the same bit of mud in, a, in the country together. I mean, when we're all going across the field, we're all, we're all in it together, and there's no snobbery attached with Beagling at all. Anybody can come. We had certain, we've certainly had some people out on Saturday who had seen the, the, the kind of... The listing. The listing in Horse yeah. and Hound or yes. whatever. So the, they came out on the back of that. And I think it's a new pack to attract some yes. support. We're going to need to keep on advertising to get more people coming along. Yeah. Well, I was... Very pleased with last Saturday and the token efforts of the Hunt Saboteurs. I think that we were absolutely right to to ignore them, and I think yeah. that they must have gone home very cold and disappointed. It was a cold, foggy day, and they were dressed badly. They must have been miserable at the I end know. of the day. And a long drive back to Birmingham, yeah. wherever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it must be miserable for them to see everyone else enjoying themselves. Well, they were standing outside the pub at the end as we were having tea, yeah. and as I walked in, I said, I'm sorry you're not invited to tea. <laughs> and I think that some of them actually would have been quite enthusiastic about coming in. And <laughs> When the weather's like this, I sometimes wonder whether there is something better that I could be doing, but generally I enjoy myself immensely hunting. I enjoy the challenge which it presents both in hunting the hounds when I do that and in running the pack. There's nothing that I want to do more in the afternoons than go out for a day's hunting. Hi, Connor! Well, you saw that somebody hollered over on the headland there, which meant that they gave a cry to say that they'd seen the hare. And so he gave a couple of sharp notes on his horn, lifted the hounds, it's called lifting them, and has taken them over to where the hare was found. I would describe myself as a countryman, though not in as great a sense as many people that I know who have a very close link with the country, whether they be gamekeepers or 
or farmers. But I do have a love for the country, and that I think is something that I share with a very great number of people. Is that Merriman? He's gone a bit lame, has he? He's a young hound. He probably isn't used to the very cold conditions we have today, but we'll, we'll look after him and make sure that he's okay. Are you all on? Uh, I imagine so. I can't get. Yes, they're, they're all there. They're a 13 and a half couple because Merriman was put in the van early and he's now blowing for home. We have nothing to apologise for. This is a sport which has been going on in the country for a very long time now. It's the, a normal thing to participate in a field sport, whether it's shooting or hunting or fishing. So to a lot of people we meet, it's a, an acceptable, ordinary thing to do, though slightly different in that we formed our own pack. I think perhaps we've used some of the skills we have through work in helping set up the pack sort of um, financial skills, negotiating skills, things like that. I've introduced a couple of my workmates to hunting for the first time as well, mm. from uh, people from abroad, in fact. And they enjoyed themselves. I think mm. it's a good opportunity for people working in London to escape from a kind of rat race, rat race existence of, of looking into a dealer screen, um, you know, in, on a, in a crowded office, in a crowded street, you know, a, a very kind of rat race existence, commuting into London, um, it's very good for them to be able to get out into the countryside at the weekend and enjoy it. If we were just out for a kill, we'd, we'd spend the afternoon in, in, in an abattoir or something like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, it, um, and it might, might seem crazy to go out in a, in a pouring, freezing wet cold day like today. But James and I had a fantastic time, didn't we, chasing mm. that hare? Well, I think everyone did. Yeah. Run, running behind us. I mean, we were, we were the two up at the front. We'll never grow out of hunting. It's something that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. It is an addiction. Some, like, I think anybody who has a passionate interest in a sport, it grows on you. There's nothing I enjoy more than watching a pack of hounds work on a Saturday. I feel I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Nick and the Newmarket Beaglers. Dan's the same age as Nick, but he's with the West Wiltshire Hunt Saboteurs, the Sabs, as they call themselves. We spent a couple of days with them recently. He also speaks only for himself. He starts his report discussing the tactics of sabotage. I'm 23 and I work with people with mental handicap and challenging behaviour. I wouldn't try and force anybody to come out sabbing or even try and persuade them to. If they're really dedicated, they'll do it. We'd probably be a lot more comfortable if we sat down and had a chat about the tactics of what we do when we're sabbing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Seems a good, a good time to come up here when there isn't a hunt, so we can have a look at the lie of the land. Usually when they're here, they come in that direction, or from that direction, round the valley, um, to big, thick wood. So the, really the best thing to do is wait until the hounds start scenting. What about using sprays? If you can spray enough of the line of the fox and get enough confusion in there, Interference. Mm. It's pretty far, isn't it? Garlic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty rotten stuff. <laughs> I've had that for about two years now. It's, like, it's, it's not. It's not smelling good. <laughs> when they're actually hunting, they put hunting the hounds through a wood just to encourage them. They use a call like this. You've probably all heard that quite mm. often. <laughs> yeah. People are a bit self-conscious about using their voices. Mm. What, what are the voice cries like? That um, beagle packs use them particularly, but mm. fox hunts do them. I think closer to the hounds usually. But mm. when you're hunting a pack on, the general sort of things. Get on, 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 on. Helps if you actually use the same accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be useless up in Manchester. <laughs> What will happen is that uh, the hunt will move off downstream and they'll be using whips and horns to control the hounds and the hunt sabs will use their whips and horns 
and very, very quickly take control of the hounds and sabotage the pack that way. So we're here. We've yeah. come up that footpath. Yeah, well, uh, so we're, we're sort of about there, yeah? Right. And I, I, I run all the way along the river, or along the railway line, rather, that way, and looking over there, and I can't see anything. So becoming a bit of a game of cat and mouse, mink hunters very much dislike being sabotaged. So they're, they're just hopping from one place to another, hoping that we don't catch up with them. We have a right to stop them, although they're acting within the law, because this is our wildlife as much as it is theirs, and we want to protect it from them. The mink hunt have uh, kenneled up the hounds and moved to another location. Uh, we had a car following them, so the car found them here. We decided to block them here for a while so that they can't get the hounds back onto the river again. We've been asked to move our vehicles, but our vehicles are at present on a public highway, and uh, we're simply stopping them from carrying on killing animals. You're worried I about care very zombie, much about, about, about life. Oh, very worried about wildlife. That's why you kill it, do you? What about when you catch? Your what about when you kill otters? Very big species. What about when you kill otters? Otter hunting is illegal. That's been the last ten years. So how can you stop your otter hounds killing otters? We haven't got otter hounds. Have you just got old fox hounds? What's in there? There's no. There's no otter hounds in there. We don't have the name. You do it for the fun of it, don't you? Do it for the fun of it. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do, on a fun. Yeah. 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 You murder for fun, right? Yeah. 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 You murder for fun. That was tomorrow. Oh, right, I'm going to move the Land Rover. No, you just said you no, murdered for fun. No, we didn't say that. You, you, we were, we were you are. About you're, the, you're the ones that thrown all the accusations. I'm not. I'm trying We're going to stay here for probably until the police come in and ask us to move. If looks could kill, they probably will in games without frontiers. All without tears. Games without frontiers. We never start trouble, ever. If we did, we'd be arrested straight away. Yeah, yeah there'd be no point. We would do we'll, the cause no good at all. None of us are that kind of people. I don't think we've, I don't think we've ever really been in that much trouble as a group. Well, none of us have ever been arrested. But so. we don't. We never provoke violence, we never start violence, mm. and we try not to use violence. And I think that even when provoked, we tend to walk away. Like to, today, mm. for instance. Or run. Or run, yeah, today, <laughs> for instance, we run away. I think the bit that people tend to sort of avoid with saboteurs, because they have the wrong impression, is the bit <clears> that actually they're doing something for everyone. They're not just doing it for themselves, they're doing it for wildlife, generally. One of the things we are to the hunting fraternity regularly is a bloody nuisance and um, to us and to the wildlife concerned they're a bloody nuisance so I suppose it's the way we see it is that we can justify what we do by the fact that we're in the right. You get the people who are there for the horse ride on a fox hunt, you get the out and out blood sports enthusiasts who just love the kill don't they? Yeah. And there's people who do it for the pose, people who think it's trendy. I think it's very possible that a lot of people could be intimidated by us. We pull up in a Land Rover and go tearing off across the field. And that's going to upset a lot of people. They're going to be confused as to what's going on. When we go out hunt sabbing, I mean, we wear barbers, flat caps, we drive a Land Rover. Um, it's, it's group very... policy to uh, be polite, definitely. We are polite. Always very polite say group. good morning to everybody who's there, introduce ourselves, yep. talk to them as much as possible. Breaking the law, I think, is something we do to a very minor degree. Trespass isn't against the law, criminally. Um, and I think apart from that, there's very little else we do that's actually even against the law at all. Dan the Hunt Saboteur, he's here, so's Nick. Nick, no matter how you dress it up, uh, no matter how you dress yourself up, the end result of your hobby is that some wretched animal has pulled limb from limb, isn't it? Well, it's certainly not the case that animals are pulled limb from limb. And let me say straight away, that I think if I were a, a member of the public who had never been hunting, or for that matter had never been shooting or fishing, I might be concerned about the cruelty aspects from what I read in the press, sometimes even from what I see on the television. But I think that if I had gone along, that I would have a much better idea of what was involved. I'd see the system of rules and checks that was involved. 
And I also think that I'd begin to learn of the conservation angle of all these sports. Before conservation became fashionable, and I'm glad that it has today, but before it became fashionable, anglers were cleaning rivers. Shooting people were planting woods and hedges. Hunting people were planting woods and hedges. That might all be so, but I mean, what you're actually doing is going out and killing an animal, aren't you, that hasn't really got much of a chance apart from well, running I think away. Well, I think that I would uh, want to say uh, also that um, the whole creed of any field sport is that an animal should always have a chance. And I think that um, it's worth uh, pointing out, for instance, in beedling, that very few uh, hares are killed. I don't think that the cruelty is any greater than that of Mother Nature. But don't you, feel, can a bit be sad. Extremely don't you feel a bit sad uh, when you actually get to the kill, when you catch a hare, uh, and, and you actually get to see the dogs? And they, I mean, it's not a pretty sight, is it? I, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sight very, very few of us um, uh, see. But uh, I think that it's uh, worth remembering, for instance, that the fisherman, when he's fishing, uh, doesn't want to cause any cruelty to the fish. He enjoys the uh, challenge of trying to catch the fish. Uh, in the same way, most people who go hunting have no interest at all in uh, a bloodlust. Uh, I think, in fact, many of them don't want uh, the animal concern to be killed. D Dan, you're looking uh, very respectable tonight, but basically aren't your lot really barely legal hooligans out to spoil these people's weekend? After all, what they're doing is legal. Yes, it is legal, but um, I think barely legal hooligans is very much the wrong impression. Well, I mean, you saw, you saw the pictures, you know, the guys with Mohican haircuts, they look like a cross between vegetarian hippies and football hooligans. There are all they? kinds of people there, and there are all kinds of hunt saboteurs. There are builders, there are labourers, there are solicitors, clerks, there are, like myself, social workers, and people from all manners of life who feel, very often country people, who feel that killing, killing animals for fun is simply not on. You see, actually, as an outsider, an agnostic outsider, the curious thing about you two is not your differences, but your, your similarities, in a sense. You're, you're both the same age, you're both countrymen, you're both basically middle class. Having seen the argument uh, of each of you and looking at each other, is there anything in each other that you could come to understand or admire or respect? Dan? I can understand um, anybody who loves the country and I can understand that in a hunter as I can in a hunt saboteur. I can't understand people who go into the country and kill animals for fun. Nick? I can't understand people who kill animals for fun either because that's not what we do. None of us have an interest in the cruelty. I would say that I think that time and time again, Parliament has been asked the question about field sports. Every time for the last 50 years it's been asked the question, it's come down in favour of field sports. And, uh, as, though I respect uh, people's views, I don't think that uh, Dan uh, is in a position where he should say, uh, irrespective of uh, the views of Parliament, we are going to interrupt your sport, we are going to break the law, we are right and you are wrong. Nick, Dan, thanks very much indeed. The arguments goes on, but uh, thank you very much for coming. I think you've both been brave to come on the programme. Thank you.